In the last video, we talked about the rule of universal specification, and we did an example in that. Now, in this video, we're going to do more examples of that. So, here we have three statements. PT, T has two sides of equal length. QT, T is an isosceles triangle. And RT, T has two angles of equal measure. So, we're going to work on this uh, arbitrary element in the, in the universe, which is tri triangle XYZ. There is no pair of angles of equal measure. So what we can put as a symbolic definition of that is RC with C representing triangle XYZ in the universes of triangles, I guess. So th there is no pair of equal angles of equal measure. We use R negating RC because RT was signifying two angles of equal measure. Now for the second definition, if triangle has two sides of equal length, then it is isosceles. And I'm sure you figured it out already that the symbolic definition of this would be PT implies QT. And this third one is AT, QT implies RT. Or that is, if it's an isosceles, then RT has two angles of equal measure. So therefore, Triangle XYZ has no two sides of equal length, so that's negated PC. So, um, no two sides of equal length. We're talking about equal length in PT. If it has no two sides of equal length, then we just negate that. So the first step here is figuring out what to do, actually. So our first step is we're looking at this statement. The first statement that is given there is if a triangle has two sides of equal length, then it is isosceles. So we gotta set set the stage for our for our for our triangle XYZ. Has two sides of equal length, then it is isosceles. PT implies QT. The reason for this is it's given its premise. Step two, uh, we have we're gonna we're gonna use our triangle XYZ now. So. We're just going to plug it into PT and see what happens. So we're going to say that triangle XYZ, uh, say that XYZ has two sides of equal length. And that would imply that, that would imply QT that, uh, that XYZ is an isosceles triangle. And this, the reason for this is you, you would know already because it's the rule of universal specification. So I'm going to abbreviate that, so the rule of universal specification arose. So moving on, AT, uh, QT implies RT. Now again, this is another premise, we have that here. So just put the reason down for premise. and. Uh, and then we again we use the rule of uh, rule of universal specification to have to work on triangle X Y Z uh, that Q C implies R C and that's R rule of universal specification is the reason for that. Now with P now what we have here is P C implies Q C which Q C implies R C. What we could do here we could just do PC implies RC, and we've known this before. It's one of our rules that I've taught in one of my past videos, using two and four. That is the law of syllogism. And that is, if something implies another thing, that other thing implies something else, and that something would imply that something else. So that's all good. In, all, all good so far. Now. Yeah, we're going to work with our negated RC, but we're bringing it all back together. So we went from here to figuring out using uh, using rule of universal specification of, of the truth or the implications of R triangle XYZ. We got it down to PC implies negated RC. Now we're just bringing back, we're just taking whatever you have here and using it whenever they whenever we need to use them to make some sense of uh, of of 
whatever we're trying to do, or, or we're trying to get, trying to figure out this uh, negated PC. So we're just using what we have and trying to make logic from it to end up with this therefore x triangle xyz has no two sides of equivalent. But anyways, negated RC, that's a premise that's given to us because it's one of our statements. So what we have now is PC implies RC, not not RC, then not PC. So therefore, not PC. And how do I get not PC? Well, using 5 and 6. And modus tollens, or modus tollens, however you want to pronounce it, we get RC. So PC implies RC, not RC, and not PC. That's modus tollens. I've taught you that in one of my past videos. So to recap, we've done here is using these steps we came to prove that this triangle XYZ has no sides of equal length you don't specifically have to go in order because we started in the second statement and then we went to the third statement then we jumped back to the first statement then we went to the last statement and we proved the last statement we have all our steps and that's how we go through and use the rule of universal specification with what we have already learned in the past videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys again next time.